We are actually, we've been in Tucson now for 55 years. So we are a longstanding member of the community. We rebuilt a few years ago. So we have a beautiful shelter now, um, including an in-house medical suite. So the cats actually can get spayed and neutered here and have other minor surgeries. And it helps us be able to take care of the cats that are here more long-term especially because we're a sanctuary and we actually take in cats with chronic illnesses. So that helps us a lot. We rescue on average about 700 cats per year. And we adopt out most of those. So, you know, about 700 adoptions per year as well. We also have a bunch of really cool community outreach programs. Uh, when it's not COVID, we have uh, some children's programs that are really great where you can come to the shelter once a month and play with the cats and learn about cat care and how to be a good citizen. Um, we also have cat camp in the summers, which is similar, but camp form. Um, food for People's Pets is a food pantry that we have um, that allows us in conjunction with the food bank to actually help pet owners who can't afford pet food so that they don't have to give up their pets. Next slide, please. <laughs> Um, we currently have an auction going on. Um, it's at 32auctions.com slash Hermitage Cat Shelter 2020. We got a lot of cool items on there and um, all the proceeds we get go to help care for the cats. So that's really great. If you, you know, just some ways you, little ways you can support us. Next slide. <laughs> and we also have our Home for the Holidays campaign going on right now. This is a really cool adoption campaign that happens from October into the beginning of January. Basically, if you adopt a cat from us during that time, you're eligible for this uh, social media contest where you could win blue buffalo food and we get money um, and you get to have a beautiful new pet. So it's really great. It's a perfect time to adopt and we're uh, looking forward to having you meet some of our cats. Kitty time. All right, so I'm actually gonna flip this screen and my coworker, where did she go? Karina is going to introduce us to some of the kitties. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. All right, so I'm gonna introduce you to some little black kitties. The first one is right here at the door. His name is Croy. Croy, boy. What's up, Croy? Good He's FIC positive, and he's a very cute little guy. We got him. He was actually, um, he was, he was dumped at our shelter three years ago. Or, what the hell? Meanwhile, oh, he's a little camera shy, as you can see. He's like, that's cry. <laughs> oh, well, excuse me. Ooh, Lavelle's grumpy today. <laughs> Who's this? He's being bitey. This is Noir. So Noir has a little red color because Noir gets a little, she gets a little persnickety. She ha she likes people to respect her space, but she really loves little head scratches. And just little ear scratches. And as long as you're approachable, real nice, with a soft voice, she's so sweet. She just likes her space. She appreciates her space. And all of these kitties are available for adoption right now. Yes, they are. This is Ginevra. Here's our little Ginevra girl. <laughs> she loves people, but she is not the, she's not a big fan of her roommates. She actually can be a little bully sometimes, so she would do better in a house where there's no other human she's or one only. But she's a little sweetie. She loves humans. And she's gorgeous. She's got a, a beautiful black coat. And she's got a little white on her chest. Hi, baby girl. <laughs> Something smells interesting on the front of <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to go hunt for some more black kitties. <laughs> yes, we are. As you can see, we have a lot of not black kitties around as well. Yes. <laughs> Hi, the boys. This is Vatican. He came to us through a hoarding situation. Uh, he was being hoarded with 
we took, I think, either four or five. They were all black babies, too. Um, but he was in a boring situation. So he, uh, at first, he was a little scared and a little nervous, but he's become, he's coming quite right out of his shell. And he's a really sweet guy. He loves humans, and he gets along with his roommates really well. This is our catio. We're about to go into, oh, I can show them. This is Ben, Ben. Oh, hey, Ren. This is Mr. Benny. The Ren has a red color, too, because Ren is definitely a bully. He likes to, he, he can be a little bit of a bully with the other kitties. But he likes humans. He marches to the beat of his own drum. He's very, he's very his own little kitty. He can be a little bully, but he's the sweet part also. <laughs> he just likes to, his thing, this is what he does. He chases the slower guys, the bigger guys, and he tries to bite their butts. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's because he's a little guy, and he tries to bite their butts. Uh, but he can be a sweet part too. He just is, he just, he just has to, he just is, he's a little misunderstood sometimes. <laughs> oh. Pintel over there. Pintel. Pintel might get adopted today. <laughs> Pintel is very sweet. This is Duncan. So Duncan's Duncan not all black. He's got some white on him. He's what's considered what's called a tuxedo. He's a true tuxedo kitty. Tuxedo kitties will have mostly black and a little bit of white, mainly the, the paws and their little right here. And that's about it. And then they're all black. Um, other kitties that are black and white are just called black and white, it's not tuxedos. But this is something. He's so hands off. He's a good boy. We're going to go into FBLB. We have a little black kitty here. It's super sweet. Hi, boo. Hi, boss. So this is FBLB. Saber. Here's Saber. Come here, Saber. Oh, meet us. They're going to fight for the lap. Oh, meet us. <laughs> Saber loves laughs too. He just wasn't fast enough. But this is Saber. He's FELB positive. FELB stands for feline leukemia. Um, it's basically immunocompromising disease, but they can live long, healthy lives as long as they're taking care of them well. But this is Mr. Saber boy. He loves, he loves laughs. He loves to be picked up. He he gets along with his other kid, his roommates too to a certain extent. He's a younger guy. I think he's a little over a year. So he's still getting into the groove of knowing himself, his personality. But he's such a little love. And then I have Baymax who stole my love. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna get him. Hi, Baymax. This is Baymax. He's not a black cat, but he's a lap cat. <laughs> Hi, I know this is Dino. Yeah. Well, yeah, this is Saber. Say next, I gotta get up, buddy. I'll promise I'll come back in. I'm coming in here for the live video later. Okay, you can get in my lap and I come back. He's gonna stand up. <laughs> come on, buddy. Few things about supplies. It can be very simple. Basically, whatever you have today is gonna work. So I'll show you what I have. I have a bunch of things because I like choices. So I have a pencil, just a regular pencil. I have a pen, like an office pen. And this pen is actually um, kind of special because you can draw with it and then you can put water on top of it and it turns it almost like paint. And this is just a regular pen from Office Depot. And um, you might even have one flying around your house. It's a precise V5 pilot pen. And then I have a watercolor marker, which I might play with. A Sharpie. So, like I said, you have lots of options. And then if you want to add color to your drawing today, you totally can. Um, I have different markers. So I have black markers, 
dark purple, green, orange, different shades of green. So maybe later I could do like a pumpkin with my cat. Okay, so if you don't have your supplies, you can run and go get them, but I'm guessing you have them with you. And we're gonna draw cats more than one way. So the first cat we'll draw, gonna look something like this. And I call this cat the triangle nose cat. Uh, and we're gonna do three different ways. So each way will be different. Here comes the first way. Maybe I'll use a sharpie because you can see that really well. So today, don't draw teeny tiny. I want you to draw big and fill up your page. That way you can put lots of fun details in there. Start with a triangle. The triangle can be small because this is the nose. And then from the triangle, you can come down, make a circle here, make a circle here, and then an arc or a smiley face shape here. So that's your first shape. Okay, then this is the triangle nose part. You come up here and you come up here and these two lines meet at the top and that's the bridge of the nose. And by the way, at any point, if you wanna add something to your cat that I didn't do, you can, because this cat is completely your own. So you can add your own ideas to this. Okay, then I'm gonna put an eye like this, and an eye like this. And cats, their irises or their pupil is a little slit like this, it's not round. So I'm gonna put the pupil. And then watch how I left a little space for the ears there. So I wanna go back and add the ears. And by the way, if you think you messed up, um, there's no such thing as messing up today. You can find ways to integrate it into your art. And I'll show you how, cause I mess up a lot. I mess up a lot. And there's lots of ways to make it look okay. That's just part of art making. Just kind of learn as we go along. Okay, two triangle ears. And then another triangle inside the ears. This is a very triangular cat. Okay, then we're gonna skip down and we're gonna do his leg because this cat is sitting. Just so you can see where we're going. Remember, this is what we're drawing right now. So kind of off to the side here, I'm gonna do another circle like this. It's really more like an oval. And then the back come like this and the front. And everybody's cat is gonna look a little different. Everyone's cat will have a slightly different shape. Some of our cats might be more pudgy. Some might be more slender like a kitten. Okay, now watch the paws here. So I'm gonna do one, two, three circles. And then over here, I'm gonna do one, two, three circles, and then an angle, and as many circles as I can fit in there, because I don't have, so that's okay, that can just be two circles.
Okay, now my favorite part, which is the tail. So my tail is gonna start here from the behind and it's gonna sweep around front and then sweep back. So that's the basic outline. Now we get to have some fun. So get your markers or your Sharpie or your water soluble pen, mine's water soluble marker. And you're gonna color in parts of it black, but not all of it. Because if you color all of it black, some things won't stand out. So you wanna be very careful and leave some parts white. So I'm gonna leave the nose white and this shape right here, the bottom of the muzzle white, the eyes, the inside triangle of the ears and the paws. But you decide for your own cat what you wanna leave white and what you wanna color in black. And whether or not you're using pencil or marker or Sharpie, it's basically the same principle. Just gonna use that tool a little differently. It looks sloppy, but what's cool about the water soluble pen, so I'm gonna show you here. If, you, if you're not working with um, water soluble pen or paint, then you, have, you will wanna go in and shade it in all the way. And this is kind of fun to watch if you guys wanna watch here. And I like to experiment when I make art because that's kind of what art's all about is uh, seeing what new things you can find and different ways of doing something. If you have a marker, you could try this with your marker and see what happens. It might be water soluble. Some of them are. And then look how I'm leaving some white lines here because I want that to stand out. I don't want the legs to disappear too much. Oops, I almost dipped my brush in my tea. <laughs> that happens at least once a day. <laughs> Oh, I did it again. I'm just gonna move this piece. And I bet that some of you can think of other ways to draw cats using different shapes, not just a triangle. If you already finished your cat, if you work super fast, you could draw another one that's all your own and think of the different shapes that you would use.
once you get this far, you can have fun adding other things. So in this one, I added words. Oh, I put two kittens in there too, because kittens are super cute. And then I added different words like, I love black cats, October, meow. So you could do that too, or maybe you want to put a pumpkin in there. You could also add kittens. I think I will add kittens to this one. This time I started different. I started with the circle of the head. And then I'm gonna do the nose. There's so many variations of shaped cats. You just kind of have fun with it.
Okay, so if you're still working on your triangle cat, triangle nose cat, you can keep working. You don't have to rush, you can stay there. And if you're finished with your triangle cat, you can follow along with me and I'll show you another way to draw a cat. Okay, I call this cat blob cat. Looks like that. And it's mostly black, but all you can see is its eyes. So we're going to draw it looking at you and then looking away from looking away from you. Okay. This time I will choose to start with a pencil. So this is like when you see a cat at night and all you can see is the shine of its eyes in the headlight of your car. Okay, so you start with the head, which is like an, an oval. And draw really light because we're going to erase the bottom part of it later. And then the body is like a blob. That's why I called it blob cat. So here's the blob that like gets big at the bottom and then back up to the neck. And here's the part where you can erase the bottom part of your circle. And then you can add the tail around the front. And you can erase this line also. Okay, now my cat's missing something so important. He's missing his ears. So here come triangle ears. One and two. And then you can erase this line and this line. Okay, now some eyes. And these are very simple eyes and they're not gonna have pupils. They're just going to stay white. They're kind of shaped like two almonds. One, two. If you want, you could also put a little nose in there. Or you can leave it blank, that's up to you. I think I'll leave mine without a nose. Okay, then take something black, like a Sharpie or a marker, or even just your pencil, because you can press really hard with a pencil and make it look pretty black. And go ahead and fill in the whole cap, except for the eyes. So the eyes need to stay white as the page. So now I'm using the Sharpie. And you remember I said art's all about experimenting, so I'm gonna do a little experiment. I wonder if you put water on it while it's fresh, will it turn into something? Nope. Truly permanent. And you could do a lot of cool backgrounds for this cat. This cat could be sitting on a fence. 
or in a tree. So if you already finished your blob cat, go ahead and give it some kind of background. Is it nighttime? Maybe there's a moon in the background. Could also give you a cat whiskers. So I'm gonna do three whiskers on each side like this. And I learned a lot from this experience, this experiment, because it's wet here now and I can't color on it until it's dry. So I'm gonna put my cat over here until he dries because I can't finish him and show you how to draw a cat facing away. Again, if you're still working on your first cat or your second cat, you don't have to rush. You can stay there and keep working. Okay, if the cat's facing away, we'll start with its body. This is gonna be a long oval that's open at the top. And the head is a circle. If you need to draw it like this, you can, and then you can erase the bottom part if that's helpful. And then two triangle ears, three whiskers on each side. And the tail, I'm gonna start the tail in the middle here, at the bottom of the cap, but in the middle of this line. So I'm imagining that this cat is sitting on something. And then the tail's hanging down. And here's a fun trick. If you wanna draw a full moon, find something round in your house. It could be a cup that's upside down or um, a yogurt container. I'm actually using my pencil sharpener. I'm gonna put it down like this on the page and trace around it so that I get a perfect circle. And that will be my full moon.
Then you can color it in black with your marker or your Sharpie or your pencil. Okay, I have one more cat to show you. But again, if you're not finished, keep drawing whatever cat you're drawing. You don't have to stay with me. I just know that we all work at different paces. So if you make art really fast, you can keep learning the next type of cat. And if you like to really slow down and meditate and take a long time, that's okay too. You don't ever have to rush. So this cat is going to be a slightly more realistic cat. And I'm actually gonna look at a picture here and show you some cool things about a cat's face. I have this picture of Onyx, who I think they said is their senior cat, their senior black cat. Here's Onyx, oh, so cute. Okay, there's Onyx. When you draw a cat from life, there's a few things you can look for. And I'm gonna outline them for you. Make these white lines. So before we drew a triangle for the bridge of the nose, well, that shape actually kind of does exist on a cat. If you've ever pet a cat, you know they kind of have this rectangular bridge of their nose. And there's these two lines here. And what's really neat is if you draw those two lines up, you'll see that often it meets with the corners of the eye. And if you kept going, and this is the part you wouldn't draw just, just to notice it. If you kept going, you would come to the base from the corner of the eyes the top of the head, you would come to the base of the ears. And then you can also look at the eyes and let me get rid of this so you can see this. You could look at the eyes and ask yourself how many eyes would fit across the width of the cat's face. And that sounds really weird, but I'll show you here what that looks like. So that's about the size of one eye. Can I copy that? Oops. How many of that shape would fit from here all the way to the other side of the face? And that's just a guess. So. It doesn't have to be totally right, but I'm just gonna try to guess here. One, two, that 
that counts as one. Trying to make them roughly the same size. Okay, so seven, eight, eight times. Okay, that's gonna help me later. I'm gonna write that down. Okay, so let's draw onyx. Onyx has a very round face. So I'm gonna start with the circle and feel free to follow along if you want. And then I'm gonna divide the face roughly in half like this. And roughly in half like this. And in this line, I'll draw a little triangle nose. It's actually not a perfect triangle. It's almost like a T-shape. And then remember those lines I showed you that come up from the nose? Go like that. Okay, and we said that the eye shape fits across here eight times. So I'm just gonna do this to help me. That means it should be four times on each side. And this part's kinda hard, so it's okay. If, um, if it's your first time drawing a cat, you can just kind of guess. Oh, that would be a cool drawing, an eight-eyed cat. I almost wanna leave it like that. Monster cat. Okay, so this eye and this eye become the real eyes. And I can erase that. And then if you take a line from the corner of the eye and bring it up to the top of the head, there's a base of the ear. And Onyx, in this picture, his ear is to the side. So I'm gonna sweep his ear like this. He's listening to something over there. We'll just do Onyx's face. Won't worry about his body there. Then you can start adding details. And instead of using a black marker, I'll, I'll use my pencil for this one. Kind of sketch in some black fur. So whatever cat drawing you're on, take a minute and get to a good stopping point. And we'll have a little bit of time to share if you want. There's no pressure, never forced to share. But if you wanna share your cat in a little bit, you can.
So while you're finishing, um, this class is, again, it's part of a series. So we can stay in touch and I'll let you know when others are. I don't teach them all. That's the beauty of this series is there's lots of different teachers with lots of different styles. And they'll teach you something different about creativity and art. And uh, if you want, the classes are free. And if you feel inspired to donate, you can. And that helps us make them possible for others in the future. And I, I will put that link again one more time. in because I, I don't know if everyone saw the first one. If you left and came back in, but now you should be able to see it. So you can donate if you like to the drawing studio or the Hermitage Cat Shelter. Okay, my cat's not quite finished, but that's all right. Let's share some cats. 